Welcome to Swish and Flick, an all Potter podcast. Swish and Flick, everyone. The Swish and Flick. Hello and welcome to episode 163 of Swish and Flick. I'm Tiffany. I'm Megan. I'm Katie. And I don't have a fun name, so I guess I'm just me today. (laughs) Hello, me. (laughs) And this episode is sponsored by Sydney Cordy. Thank you so much, Sydney. Thank you. I could have been Michelle Obama. Thank you, Sydney. You could have been. Should have been. But you're not. I'm not as great as her. So (laughs) today we will be discussing the first half of chapter 24 of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Occlumency. So make sure that you have read that chapter and you're ready to apparate into the details. And before we begin, Meg's Mouse Tales, also known as the Petrus family, (laughs) has weekly profit news. You know, before we go to the weekly profit, you should have done like dive deep into the details because you have to dive deep into someone's brain. For legitimacy, which is what we're learning against oh. with occlumency. Mm. Should think about things, Tiffany. Nah. Yeah. Nah. Mm. <laughs> mm. nah. Uh. Purdy. Nah. <laughs> Profit? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> what? Are we ready? <laughs> okay. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. I'm here. Uh, so um it is just your next weekly reminder that. Swish and Flick is going to be exclusive to Spotify starting on October 18th. So don't forget to go and follow us on there. Just a reminder again that Spotify is free. We also have some fun new um, things that we're going to be doing with our new Spotify account. So we're going Mm -hmm. to be creating different Swish playlists for you that are going to be coming to our profile on Spotify. So that includes playlists of episodes that like are people's favorites or like different themed playlists we're also going to be coming up with like different themed playlists of music for you guys yes sarah i think it'd be really cool slash funny if we did a playlist on our like account that has um all the songs we've ever mentioned yeah. so someone wants to tell us what they are <laughs> <laughs> and um you can bet that i'll be making a t-swift playlist for you guys just saying somebody asked about it yes of course of course oh, i will. I can make a sinatra playlist do it yeah. there will be a sad songs with sarah playlist oh yeah probably a um, musical playlist okay. each house that we're gonna probably do a playlist mm-hmm. for or t- a couple you know yeah lots of fun stuff yeah i think it'll be fun i'm so yeah. excited for this partnership me too, yeah. too. so excited I'm excited Um, also we wanted to do a little fun giveaway type thing to get people excited and to get people to make sure that you switch over to us before the 18th on Spotify. Got to promote that hype. Yeah. So (laughs) if you go on to Spotify and follow us, take a screenshot of it and email it to us at swishflickcast at gmail.com and put your address in the e- in the email, we will send you a sticker for doing that. Woo-woo. So every single person who does it will get a sticker direct from us to you just for following us on the pie of Spada. We might even Spotify. smooch it before we put it in the envelope. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. If you've already been subscribed on Spotify, you don't have to tell me that. Just go screenshot the page and email it to me that you're following us. Well, That's you have to literally follow. all that matters. Yeah. Just, yes, it follow. just has to look like that where it says following and there you yep. go. Yeah. Woo-woo! Um, but it might be like a new sticker. I'm not sure. It might that. be a new sticker. Or I think it's going to be a new sticker for sure. It's just a matter of what it's going to look like. But you will get a sticker in the mail. Stickers. Um, so we created new voting merch through Bonfire. <clears throat> so Bonfire is a cool platform that like basically allows you to do group ordering um, and then allows you like helps you donate proceeds to a specific um, organization. So we created three designs. 
Yeah. Yeah. So we have our vote by mail design, which is a really cute little like owl looking stamp thing that says vote by mail. And 50 percent of the proceeds from that are going to be donated to the American Postal Workers Union. Um, and then also the cast your vote. We have a cast your vote shirt. I think you can also get it on like crew neck, right? You know, a lot of things. There's like a bunch of different things you can choose. Yeah, it doesn't options. have to just be a t-shirt. So like, um, same with like the, the vote by mail one, you can get a t-shirt. You can, there's this really cool option. That's like a football Jersey. Yeah. I actually am getting that one. It looks really cool. It's um, just different tank tops, crew necks, long sleeve shirts. Um, there's a ton of options if you go onto the to the website, which um, the link will be in the description of this episode. Um, and then also we have a proclamation bag that that one, I believe, is only available in the bag, right? Yeah, totally. it doesn't let you like put it on more than one type of thing. So it's like different bags or different like shirt type things. But um we thought that this one looked really cool as a bag. So it's like a proclamation. Oh uh, yeah. Educational decree. Oh yeah, yeah. An educational decree telling you to vote. Um I really enjoy them. Katie is dropping the links for you guys in Discord right now. And then also again they'll be in the description of this podcast. But I do have another weekly profit thing. We can, uh, you know, more of a more of a normal swish weekly profit. <laughs> more normal ish. More normal. Um. So this video game. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, it's a lot. It was announced that Hogwarts Legacy is coming. Um, it's an RPG video game. Also, I will say Warner Brothers felt the need to put out a statement that J.K. Rowling did. was not involved in the making of this video game. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, if you are still potentially uncomfortable purchasing it for reasons I totally understand, don't forget if you are going to get it to maybe offset your purchase with a donation to a trans organization. That is a good way to like counterbalance um, getting it. So some examples you could donate to Black Visions Collective, which aims to organize black communities and dismantle systems of violence while centering queer and trans people. You could donate to the Marsha P. Johnson Institute, which works to protect and defend the rights of black transgender people. Or potentially the Emergency Release Fund, which is a member of the National Bail Fund Network, which was established following the death of Laylene Pol Polanco. Um, the Mutual Aid Fund raises money to post bail for trans people, though in light of COVID-19, the fund has expanded its mission to post a bail for medically vulnerable individuals and those who identify as LGBTQ. Um, so... Just some options. If you're thinking of purchasing it, maybe also think of making a donation to counter it so yep i think that's probably what i will be doing if we end up getting it on one of the new systems that comes out um, yeah but definitely counteracting that if i purchase it in any kind of way yes. what systems it'll be on the new xbox system and the ps5 which are Coming out in 2021, I believe. PlayStation 5. Are you okay? Does Katie know there's no recap? I'm going to do it off the cuff because I <laughs> forgot. <laughs> oh, hello. It'll be real interesting. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, literally her face. <laughs> I thought you had another one. Oh, yeah. I can, Give me I some just, time I here. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, I'll do it because I, I didn't know if it was like going on too long. So I did also have another thing that I wanted to share with you guys because I just happened to come upon, come upon this trans owned Etsy shop um, and they have some pretty cool stuff. It's called Queerest Gear. Um, right I'm going love. to put the link in Discord for those listening live. Um, but they have we'll do like. It live. <laughs> but they have really cute stuff and um it's trans owned so they've got patches they have really cool hats and also some masks that i liked um but it's super cool so check them out 
I really love their hats. They're so like they're hand painted. Um, okay, can I get one and maybe really it'll cute. make my head learn how to wear hats? <laughs> Katie, you just like look like a little kid when you put a hat on. I just <sighs> I can't. I just I can't. Fine. Also, <laughs> did you see this new sticker of your face? Because it's literally adorable. The one of half my face. Yeah, I love That's it. That's like how I take all my pictures. So I really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it a lot. Uh, so yeah that's what i got oh my god i love the gamer one <laughs> yeah i really love their stuff uh, it's super cute they do have beanies though right i f- i think so cool i can wear those that's cool stuff do you look at the hat i know i just saw that breath of the wild very heard of cool it. what breath is wild <laughs> yours in the morning oh. hey <laughs> that's funny all right sarah i need you to help me with this so i want you to go oh, 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 for me every okay. time i point to you okay okay <laughs> i'm excited for this oh, 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 recap oh, 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 recap <laughs> <laughs> i love that oh my uh, god it just comes to me you know all right, oh so bear with me because I didn't write this down and didn't realize till about mm, two minutes ago. So here we go. Last episode. <laughs> okay. It's Christmas. Sirius is actually happy. He's decorating. He's singing a song that I thought Rolling wrote, but it was actually Tiffany. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Percy was really not nice again. What else is new? And they go to visit Mr. Weasley and he's been experimenting with muggle remedies and Mrs. Weasley's not happy about it. And then Harry and the trio run into... Wait, Harry and the duo? The trio, I don't know. They run into Lockhart at Mungo's, which is kind of interesting. And then... uh, he yeah. It was trio. We uh, the incredible... The incredible trio. Uh, we actually get <laughs> to meet sort of Neville's parents, really his mom, but... It was kind of sad. Yep. Yeah. Good recap. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we all know, there's no one here to do a fun intro to the summary. Ha, ha, ha. Summary. <laughs> <laughs> well, all good things must come to an end. Like Sasa on this podcast. And, you know, also Christmas break. Um, <laughs> so Harry is not looking forward to going back to Hogwarts probably for the first time in his life because Umbridge is there and you know how we feel about her um, and really Sirius isn't taking it uh, easy either because he's sad that he's going to be now stuck in his house with Creature and everyone's leaving um, so then Harry finds out that Dumbledore wants Snape to teach Harry some Jedi mind tricks I'm one with the force and the force is with me Sirius and Snape <laughs> also get into it because you know they don't care for each other Which is putting it very mildly. Uh, But good news, Mr. Weasley is cured. (laughs) And he's out of the hospital. And then, you know, before they know it, they're taking the night bus and they bang, end up in Hogsmeade. End up in in Hogwarts. Well, not in Hogwarts. The (laughs) night bus doesn't go into Hogwarts. What is wrong with me? I don't know. (laughs) It doesn't go into Hogwarts. It goes right by the gates. And then they're like forced to drag all their stuff up to the school. I don't know. It's a long way to walk. What's going on? Just saying. They're back at school. Okay. There's <laughs> <laughs> a lot happening. Did you on like that my side Jedi mind table. tricks? I thought that was really clever. No, I was just about to say, um, what is the force? Force is all around you, Tiffany. <sighs> Use it. Use the force. Yeah, I tried to force choke her and it didn't work. Oh wait, no, it worked. <laughs> it was delayed. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's talk about creature. What an arc he has, right? I really love him. Do you? Oh, Not do you love, right like, now. Love him in this book? I don't love him right now, <laughs> but I really love him in Deathly Hallows. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So Creature has been lurking in the attic, or that's where he apparated into and out of when he left to see Miss Bella. Because we all know that when house elves apparate, they make that loud crack sound. And that would have been really noticeable, I think. What do you think? I came up with that all on my lonesome. I wonder uh, if they I can agree. make it so it's quiet. 
I think if they were to make themselves quiet, then when Dobby would have apparated into the Malfoy Manor cellar, it wouldn't have been loud. I don't know where he was going at that point in time. He was terrified. Yeah, but like, I don't know. Can you like? It's okay to say, but also like, I don't think like would serious notice. Like he's too like sad everyone like it hates him to notice what he's doing also like how big of a house is it like you know what i mean like if you're all the way if the kitchen's all the way in the basement and like if they've got like four levels and that's like basement like ground level one but you knew that already whoa (laughs) siri you need to chill out sometimes my (laughs) phone does that when i say serious Mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah sometimes people stuff to that when they say my name they're like, I said Sarah, <laughs> not Siri. Hey, Siri. Oh, goodness. Sorry to everyone, but, you know. <laughs> You're awful. But so I just wonder, like, how tall of the building. I think it's pretty tall, but I so also like, think he went there to be like. But would they have heard is what week. I'm saying. Like, oh, no, I think he went there so they wouldn't hear. True. That's why I think he was up there. Um. So Sirius said. That he found him up there in the attic, covered in dust, no doubt looking for more black family relics to hide in his cupboard. Sirius is satisfied with this story, but Harry isn't. It made him feel really uneasy because Creature, you know, he's in a better mood right now. He's in a mood. And in Harry's opinion, this is not a good sign. Quote, His bitter muttering had subsided somewhat, and he submitted to orders more docilely than usual. Though once or twice, Harry caught the house off staring avidly at him, always looking quickly away when he saw that Harry had noticed. So what do you think of this behavior? What do you think of... Not really the mood behavior, but the looking at Harry behavior. What What do you make of that? He probably knows information about Harry from Bellatrix or something. Yeah. That's what I always put it down to, like, almost like they both know yeah. what they know, you know? Don't you know? Do you know? Uh, she clearly told him something, <laughs> or maybe, like, at this point, or, that he was asked to keep an eye on Harry by them. Mm-hmm. To mm-hmm. Report or it could back. also be one of those situations where, like... I like that, Meg. That he knows the stuff that's going on in the order, and he might be like, does he know that I know? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, does does Harry know that I know <laughs> and that I've left? Yeah. So yeah. he's like overcompensating for Correct. being nervous, kind of like, you know, like a liar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I asked the question to my Google and it sent me to a Stack Exchange article. Good old but Stack I just Exchange. typed in like narcissa and bellatrix and creature and so this came up so somebody asked the question why were narcissa and bellatrix kind to creature so we know that sirius did not have a good relationship with creature for many 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 reasons um and so this person came up with an answer it said they thought that Narcissa and Bellatrix being kind to Creature means that they had been kind to him in the past at some point before Creature knew the secrets of the Order. I don't know how I feel about that necessarily. I'm not saying that they were mean to him in any kind of way, but maybe more indifferent rather than hating him. Well, I wonder too, like... uh because, and I'm not saying that their behavior towards house owls are at all kind or anything, but the only one we've ever really seen like Malfoy's at all deal with are, um, there's Dobby who is like totally like, um, house owls should be free and all of that other stuff. So like, I don't t- think they mesh well where now creature has always been the kind that like they're both. Both of these people, both Creature and Bellatrix and the Malfoys and all of them are like, you know, Hermione's a mudblood. We don't like them. Blood traitors. So like they're kind of all in the same line of like evil thinking, (laughs) Mm -hmm. being bigots, whatever, you know, Um, where Dobby is not like that. Mm -hmm. And that's probably a major reason on why he and the Malfoys did not get along. I don't think Lucius was nice to any house elf. I'm not saying that at all, but that's all we've seen him be horrible to the one that like is his total opposite. So like maybe Narcissa and Bella are nicer to creature because they all believe in the same 
things I'm not allowed to say. I was going to say, I was going to say a bad word. Yeah. Some Bob shorts, you know? Yeah. I just, I just don't know. I mean, well, she must have not been horrible to him, which is kind of interesting to think about. I also think too, like I, I and I, I don't know. I would think that they also are the types of people that like, they know that they can get more like, what is that saying? Like you're going to catch more flies with sugar than vinegar or something like that. Uh, whatever that saying honey. is, you know what I mean? Yeah. Honey and whatever, you know what I'm saying? So like, they're going to be sweeter to him and nicer to him to get the information they want out of him anyways. Well, maybe they liked him <laughs> more everyone's because like Sarah, it's like you get more bees with honey and I'm like, you get more flies. <laughs> She's just trying to catch <laughs> flies. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, creature was like, so loving and obsessed with, you know, Sirius's mom, maybe that they were like nicer to him because of that. So he probably felt comfortable going there. Okay. So Harry didn't mention his suspicions to Sirius about creature because the cheerful mood that Sirius had been in was quickly starting to fade. And this is because the Christmas holiday was soon to be over. And this just makes me so sad because he could have had so many more good days with them, but he was like dreading and anxious and depressed. So he would become grumpy and withdraw to Buckbeak's room for hours at a time. And his gloomy mood seemed to be contagious and put all the others in kind of like an off mood as well. That's so sad. I know. And it like kills me because like he doesn't have much longer to like, I know time not be sad moods, wasting time. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I just kind of wish Harry would have said something to him about his thoughts, but Harry should have said something to Harry about (laughs) his issues. Well, yeah. And Harry was worried about leaving Sirius alone in the house with only creature again for the first time in his life. He was actually not looking forward to going back to Hogwarts. Going back doesn't look good. It means he's going to be leaving Sirius and all his, you know, all his friends at this house and the relaxation and the comfort of family and going back to Hogwarts means that you're going back to the tyranny of Dolores Jane Umbridge and, you know, being banned for life (laughs) from Quidditch (laughs) for life. I don't want anybody to forget that it is for life. Excuse me as I take a hey, sip. Wait, was he banned for life? He's banned for life. <laughs> for life. L Y F E. Boyfriend's gonna for be life. 85 years old. Pick up a broomstick. <laughs> she's gonna come as a stinking ghost and say, You are banned for life. Put it down. Oh. So I want to read a quote. <laughs> then there was no quidditch to look forward to now that he had been banned. <laughs> <laughs> there was every likelihood that their burden of homework would increase as the exams drew nearer. Dumbledore remained as remote as ever. In fact, if it had not been for the DA, Harry felt that he might have gone to Sirius and begged him to let him leave Hogwarts and remain in Grimald Place. Mm-hmm. Then, on the very last day of holidays, something happened that made Harry positively dread his return to school. No, that's done, done. You're welcome. You do you, boo. I know. Well, I did do me. (laughs) Mrs. Weasley poked her head into Ron and Harry's room where they were playing wizard chess, and they had an audience of Ginny, Hermione, and Crookshanks. And she said, could you come down to the kitchen? Professor Snape would like a word with you. Huh? Mm -mm. no that's when i would have like harry's brain refused (laughs) harry's brain refused he was like "Uh -uh, uh-uh nah (laughs) (laughs) oh nay nay and i said oh nay nay harry didn't register what she had said at first he's focusing on the chess match hit back of his mind is like nope (laughs) and one of his castles is engaged in a violent tussle with a pawn of ron's and he was egging it on enthusiastically. Squash him. Squash him. He's only a pawn, you idiot. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Weasley. What did you say? <laughs> so here we go again. Uh. Take two. So she repeats herself. Professor Snape in the kitchen with the candlestick. <laughs> you know what is so funny? You know what is so funny? When I was reading that today, that's what I was thinking. I... I shoot you not. <laughs> you shoot me not. Oh, man. Uh, no, but he is in the kitchen. With Dinah? 
There might be candlesticks. Could be. Who knows? Could be with Dinah. And, you know, he wants a word with Harry. That's Snape's nickname for Sirius. Dinah? (laughs) Dinah? (laughs) Harry's mouth fell open in horror. Everyone, the horror. the horror. Everyone else in the room is gaping at him, and he like can't believe this. He's like Snape. Snape. <laughs> Harry said blankly. Professor Snape, dear, said Mrs. Weasley, reprovingly. Now come on quickly. He says he can't stay long. What's he want with you, Ron? Said, <laughs> looking unnerved as Mrs. Weasley withdrew from the room. You haven't done anything, have you? No, said Harry, indignantly <laughs> racking his brains to think of what he could done to make Snape <laughs> pursue him to Grimo Place. Snape, Snape. Hey, Snape, Snape. Severus Snape. <laughs> Dumbledore. <laughs> <laughs> Had his last piece of homework perhaps earned a tea? Tea for troll. Harry then pushes the kitchen door open. And there is Sirius and Snape, you know, drinking tea, laughing about the good old times. Just kidding. They're sitting in silence. And (laughs) you can feel the mutual dislike for each other pouring from their expressions. Could you cut the tension with a knife? Probs, Bob. No. And there's a letter laying open in the middle of the table. And in true Harry fashion, he lets out an... Er, to break the silence <laughs> just to hey. let you know everybody know he's there the chosen one has arrived bow down that classic er saved his life in the triwizard maze when he had to figure out the riddle from the sphinx uh, it was spied er spy uh er the er <laughs> he's like a spider a spider I'm Hermione look at me <laughs> Oh, I I'm so clever. Spider. All right. I don't know what's wrong with us today. Uh, so as Tiffany said, Snape and Sirius are both in the kitchen. And Snape tells Dino. Harry to sit down. And then Sirius goes, you know, I think I'd prefer it if you didn't give orders here, Snape. It's my house, you see. Which is just so petty, but it's like literally the best. Uh, anyway. She's just trying to stir the pot. Oh, a thousand percent. The cauldron, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of that Celestina Warbeck song about the you cauldron. Stole my cauldron. cauldron of hot, you strong love. Steal my cauldron. <laughs> okay. Anyway. So Snape says he was supposed to see Harry alone, but. Sirius insisted on being there. And then Snape says, I am here on Dumbledore's orders, but by all means, stay black. I know you like to feel involved, which I think is a low bow. A low bow? They're just both being Richards here. Bow! Yeah, they're both being very unkind. I mean, this is... I can't. Okay. Go on. Um, This is like high school level no this is like this is like middle school level drama if i'm being honest but you can't talk because this is my spot on the playground (laughs) basically um this is my cafeteria table (laughs) please step down on wednesdays we wear black you can't (laughs) sit with us and And then sirius is like oh you want to wear me what (laughs) you want to wear me (laughs) There's some body language going on. Oh, oh so. <laughs> um, but then he keeps going. So he, that was a low blow. But then he just keeps going. Like, Sirius is clearly angry about it. <laughs> and uh, he lets his chair fall back onto all four legs with a loud bang. And Snape then says Sirius is frustrated by the fact that he can do nothing useful for the order. And that causes Sirius to flush. And then Snape gets that stupid look of triumph on his face. The lip curl. Ooh. Lip curled in triumph. Makes me want to look like this. Look at me. Look at look at Skype. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well like like, well like. Uh, Oh well like. (laughs) Well like. (laughs) <laughs> that was a really Meg, good one. Meg just said it and then she changed her face to look well like over the sky. Oh gosh. I wish you guys could see us instead of just listening to us, but just know there's straight up shenanigans going yeah. on. So. Yeah. 
Um, so Snape then turns to Harry to tell him that the headmaster wants him to study occlumency this term. Um, so I pulled up. What is occlumency? Does that mean when you get really good eyesight? That's an answer to a Jeopardy question. Occlumency? No, what is? Get it? What is? Uh, occlumency. <laughs> got it. Um, so occlumency is Alex. the act of magically closing one's mind against legilimency. Um, it is ancient and has existed since medieval times, and it can prevent a legilimence from accessing one's thoughts and feelings or influencing them. A person who practices this art is known as an occluman. Um, so some examples. Gellert Grindelwald was a very accomplished occluman. He was able to conceal his true mind from even Queenie. Um, Tiffany O'Malley's I on got, that list. I got really confused for a second. I was like, what is Queenie? Wow. Why does that matter? And then I was like, <laughs> duh. Those Fantastic Beast movies. <laughs> uh, Barty uh. Crouch Jr., because he manages to hide his Bart true mind Crouch. from Dumbledore and Snape, who oh. are both accomplished legilimens. I didn't even think about that. Dude, he must have been epic then. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Because <gasps> think about how good Snape is. Is Snape really good at both then? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. Katie. <gasps> what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't like the guy, but I can, I can appreciate his talents, right? <laughs> who? Snape. Snape. Yeah. Snape. Severus Snape. Um, so in Half-Blood Prince, we learn that Bellatrix trains Draco in occlumency so that he can keep the mission um, of him killing Dumbledore from Dumbledore. Um, and also Slughorn is noted for his skills in occlumency, uh, as well as Morphin Gaunt. Hmm. So... We know lots of mm -hmm. them. Lots of them. There also is a Wizarding World article on occlumency called A Guide to Occlumency. Um, it is has been perfected by Snape Malfoy and apparently Bellatrix. So just how would you go about <laughs> mastering occlumency? Um, occlumency was the only method by which legilimency could be repelled and it involved the subject of the legilimency attack effectively shutting down their own mind so as to prevent access to their thoughts so the connection between Voldemort and Harry meant both found it easy to delve into each other's minds for Harry this was accidental and initially unwanted but Voldemort who often practiced legilimency on his followers and victims alike began to use it against Harry as soon as he became aware of the insight he'd been giving him um, that was when, this is what we're talking about now in Order of the Phoenix, that was when Dumbledore insisted Harry begin learning occlumency. Um, so basically how it's performed is you just have to like make your mind blank and calm. Um, you have to rid your mind of all thoughts and emotions. <laughs> I'd never be able to do this. It would be really hard. It'd be very hard. Um, My brain never turns off. I know. Same the, here. The concept they compare it to is similar to fighting off the Imperius curse, which this surprises me that Harry has such a hard time with occlumency when he had such an easy time with Im the Imperius curse. Like you would think. But I, I wonder if it's because of the teacher. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, probably. Mm. I think if which. Luke like I, if Lupin were to be skilled in this. Yeah. I just like, I mean, Dumbledore had to know that this wasn't going to go well. I think this was his only option. Yeah, yeah. I guess just like, because like yeah. Snape was so skilled in occlumency, he could guard <laughs> himself. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. And, and then it goes into like Harry's attempts at occlumency. It's a really cool article. I'll um, I can put it in the sh the show notes for you guys. Um, it talks about Draco being an occlumens. Um. He was certainly fairly accomplished, given that he could deny to Snape's face having anything to do mm -hmm. with the cursed necklace that injured Katie Bell. And mm -hmm. um, wait, Draco did that? Yeah, he lied. What? I'm totally kidding. Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what? I was just about to be like. The look on Tiffany's face, she was like, are you serious I right now? I was kind and of was upset. Say, As a matter of fact, I'm not. I'm Sasa. OK, Tiff, go. I was just wondering if we've talked about the um, 
like the meaning behind these words, like occlumency and legitimacy. Have we talked oh, about that before good, on the pod? I don't think huh? so. No, I don't think so. Occlumency is like outside. Legitimacy is Ed- like inside. Etymology so, uh, for occlumency right. is Latin. Right. So <laughs> it says occlusto. I think that's how you say it. Occludere. Means to hide. Ooh. And men's means mind. So to hide the mind. Ooh. And then legitimacy is... is it's spelled like Lego. Don't hide. It's probably the not pronounced that way. It means I read and then men's mind. I read the mind. So I thought that was really cool. That's in that Latin. Cool. I butchered the pronunciations. You're welcome. But you did your best. Thank you, Katie. You're welcome. I do like this one little paragraph in this Wizarding World article that talks about like the difference between Draco and Harry and why Draco could master this and Harry couldn't. Um, so in in this, Draco was fundamentally different to Harry. Harry couldn't master occlumency because he couldn't shut down emotion. He was hot headed. He was ready to spring mm. into action. He's unable to stop himself from biting back. Draco, on the other hand, was well able to control himself when circumstances demanded it. By the time of his sixth year, he was used to compartmentalizing his feelings, sneering bully on the one hand, frightened teenager on the other. So he did a very good job at hiding how scared he was a lot of the times of the situation that he was in yes how sad is that it is really sad but i wonder too like if harry had a different teacher that also didn't react to him you know what i mean like they're both reacting off of each other um if he would have been able to master it like if lupin was you know what i mean like because he's more level-headed he's more calm he's not gonna the two of them aren't gonna get like enraged at each other um like him and snape do um so that's super sad with draco it is someone in the discord i apologize because it flew by already uh mentioned that with judy um he explained what the purpose of fighting off the imperius curse was but with with snape and harry learning dumbledore never told harry why Mm -hmm. he needed exactly like he didn't and that's an important thing, thing within yeah. learning. You Especially know, with Harry, though. You know, yeah. what's, th- what's this for? You know, uh, Yeah, and he has questions about... I mean, he's banned for life from Quidditch. He's questioning <laughs> everything about his life. You can... <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, we all know why he can't know. I mean, we could say this all day long. If the circumstances were this different, blah, 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 right. you know... It's just the way I, like, I just the cookie feel like, crumbles. Like Dumbledore is given so much flack for all the things he chooses, but like he's not a perfect person. What would you do? Uh, yeah, like that's a tough situation to be in. Where like the and like I don't know how many people are in the Wizarding World, but it's I don't think it's that small of an amount. You know what I mean? Like they're mm-hmm. resting on really Dumbledore's probably feeling the pressure of like all of these people. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. not a light decision to take. And looking back, vision, your vision, what, what? 2020 yeah what am i actually saying i don't know who knows i mean could he have done things a little bit differently possibly would the outcome be the same we don't know yeah don't step on butterflies when you go back in time guys you shouldn't just, step just, on you know, butterflies them with your finger <laughs> well that's true <laughs> i don't uh, butterflies scare me and i'm not lying my aunt is terrified of dragonflies so you're not alone i don't like them either those suckers fly real fast they're so though. cool they got like mm. the, their wings look all like metallic-y. They can look cool from far away. Don't come by me, please. <laughs> thanks. Bye. Um, yeah. So basically, I just, I, I, I honestly, I don't know if Harry ever would have been able to master occlumency even with different circumstances, purely just because of his personality. I feel like occlumency is very much a personality thing, whether or not you can do it, like. Snape knows when, t- I mean, he doesn't always, but Snape generally knows when to bite his tongue and stop talking. He knows when to not fight back. He knows, like, he has good judgment on those things. Same with Dumbledore. Mm. Same with Draco, really, even though Draco's a bully. Like, again, he learned how to compartmentalize his feelings, which is something that Harry doesn't do very well. Harry wears his emotion on his shoulders, like, at all times. And that's just, like, a personality trait of Harry. And I feel like. He is just too emotional. He, which I mean, that's not a bad thing. Um, by well, by all means, when it, I love people who are genuine and show emotion and are sensitive. And guys, you can be like that. Just saying. Truth. I agree that someone Meg's in the Discord chat. 
said that um, Snape is like real emotional. Which I agree. Like, yeah. think about how far he gets Very up with, emo. Yeah, like with Sirius. He was like deranged at the end of three. He you does, but he also that. knows when to shut it off, though. Like, that's but the difference. But does he, though? He's, like, there's some, there's, there's some times where I think he, there's subjects that he loses control over. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Where he can't shut it off. But I do want to bring up the Horcrux for a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. No, but honestly, so um, when we talk about no, Harry... But yeah, but yes, but But no. when we talk about Harry controlling, um, you know, like occlumency and legitimacy and whatever like whatever that i don't know if there, i don't think there's even like a term for it but whatever that connection is between the horcrux connection between voldemort and harry at the end of seven harry ventures in and out of voldemort's mind if you don't remember that i'm finishing seven right now they're at hogwarts and he's able to hold off that urge to dip into voldemort's mind that he couldn't do before and he's able to pull himself back out and towards the end of the book more uh the author did write that he can control it now but i think that that's just horcrux specific so I don't think there's a term for that, but mm. it's like in that same ballpark. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. Like he eventually learns how to do that. But I obviously like after, I don't think he's venturing into anybody's mind. Just saying. Yeah. I, I have a lot of words. You don't think, you don't think Harry ventures into Ginny's mind? No, I think that'd be rude. I think he doesn't really want to. Like, I feel like he just doesn't have, um, he doesn't have the need for it after the whole yeah no know. i agree but i wonder like if, if he, he could. could yeah yeah who knows <laughs> um so anyway so like from the book the definition says the magical defense this is what snape says the magical defense of the mind against external penetration an obscure branch of magic but a highly useful one highly useful highly useful um so Harry then jumps again, like in his mind, he's like, wait, wait, wait. I thought that we agreed that I wasn't being possessed. Why do I need this? So again, like this is his anxiety coming to play. And I think that I think honestly, like just to like jump back on the mental health train here, it's pretty clear that mental health is never thought of in the wizarding world because Dumbledore never even thought about Harry's anxiety in this moment. Did he not? I don't think he did. But let's let's talk about the three men that are in this room. Snape, Sirius, and Harry. All of them. Y'all have some issues and y'all need to get some help. Thousand percent. We're not lying. Like, and I'm not saying that's getting help is not a bad thing. Going to talking to someone is not a bad thing. But they need it. That's something that the wizarding world is lacking. Um, but yeah, y'all have been through some stuff, you know? And y'all might be, y'all should go, well, maybe not all three of you go together, but like, <laughs> Snape and Sirius, you should have a session together and talk about your issues. Yeah. Yeah. Bring tissues. I don't know if that would actually be helpful, but it could be. It could be. I I just think that, I I personally think that Dumbledore didn't realize how affected Harry was by some of the things that he withheld. And while I understand yeah. that it's important for a lot of these things to be withheld, I also don't know if I I just don't know if I agree that that Dumbledore understood how Harry truly felt about some of these things. Like, I don't think Dumbledore well, thought that he would jump and and go back to the thoughts of, am I being possessed? Oh my gosh, do I need to stay away from people? Like, I don't think that Dumbledore thought that he was thinking those things. I wonder too, like, if, if because Harry wasn't projecting like the um, image of like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. they always say like, check on your, like the friend that's always like helping and doing all these things. Like you don't know how people are. And so like Harry's projecting, that he's fine really you know what i mean uh for the most part so like he doesn't even think he's like oh well he he seems fine but that's not you know what i mean like that's truly not the case with people like you should always check on everybody right you know i don't know if that yeah. makes sense so like i agree with what you're saying like i just don't think like because harry was projecting one way harry dumbledore was probably like oh he seems fine like he do, he won't have issues blah 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 i don't know you know what i mean which is not the case Does that make sense? I don't know what I'm saying anymore. No, I no, I know. Like (sighs) Harry doesn't he outwardly projects to Ron and Hermione, but 
to everybody else, I feel like he doesn't. He does a pretty good mm-hmm. job of masking how he's feeling and putting on um putting on I think a even to run in Hermione, there's times where he's like, I don't need your help. Like this is on me. Like projecting it being like, I've got it covered. Don't worry about it. But kind they of know. Thing. We're like, yeah, but they know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Cause they're with him the most. You know, they see him the most and like they know when he's not himself, but like other people don't. So Harry's projecting yeah. the image of like, I'm fine. I'm tough. I can handle this. When really our friend needs, you know, yeah. A qualified human being to talk to him about what's going on. Yeah. And he, and in this chapter, like he does try to get some answers out of Snape, but uh, like, did we think that was going to happen? <laughs> so he, do you think that it would have had, like he would have had answers if Sirius wasn't in the room with him? No, I don't think so. I, I think that Snape doesn't feel the need to, um, calm him in any way he doesn't really care to snape it's just like i have to do this i'm not super happy about having to do this but i know that i have to and honestly snape doesn't even know everything at the end of the day so like especially at this moment in time in the books like snape doesn't know honestly snape probably doesn't really even know what to tell him he just knows that dumbledore wants him to teach harry how to shut his mind off because there's some sort of connection period um and I don't know. He doesn't really know anything until like six. Yeah, exactly. So Harry does try to ask Snape, why do I need these lessons? Um, but Snape kind of snaps at him and is just like, because the headmaster thinks it's a good idea, like end of conversation period. And you're not to tell anybody that you're doing it, especially not Umbridge. It's going to be a secret. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, ooh, this is kind of, I mean, this is kind of cool. Like Dumbledore and Snape going behind Umbridge's back for something super important. Um, yeah. I just think that that's cool. Um, so, and then the news. <laughs> the, Sting the, the big, to the man. The big old news is Besides that. Besides Spotify. <laughs> is that <laughs> Snape himself is the the teacher of the lessons to Harry, um, and I the teacher of the lessons. The teacher <laughs> of the lessons is one Mister Summer Snape. I professor. I really enjoyed the description of how Harry was feeling. Um, so it says in the book, Harry had the horrible sensation that his insides were melting. I yeah. I just like I can. I could feel that. I get it. That is a horrible feeling. Um, He says extra lessons with Snape. What on earth had he done to deserve this? He quickly looked around at Sirius for support. And yeah, boy's got his back. Sirius goes, why can't Dumbledore teach Harry? Why you? Um, And then Snape silkily says, I suppose because it's a headmaster's privilege to delegate less enjoyable tasks. I assure you, I did not beg for the job, (laughs) which is just so freaking snarky right in front of Uh, Harry. Yeah. uh. Well, I mean, he doesn't. uh, It's not like it's shocking. Well, no, it's just rude. Well, for sure. But Snape is rude. On top of, on top of the fact that he tells Harry that he's to tell people he's taking remedial potions and says it to his <laughs> face that nobody would question this. What do they call it in? Uh, These are sick right. burns. What do they call it in? You need in some ointment. Oh, remedial I don't potions. Remember. Cause it, and then they're like the thing and they're like can use the talking about potions wand. or whatever. He's like lotion. Oh yeah, oh, ocean. No, not the ocean. <laughs> not I ocean. Even puffs yet. <laughs> the thing where all the fish so swim funny. in. Uh, um, the ocean. So I just good. thought that that was super rude, though. He's got to tell people he's taking remedial potions. Like no, hard no. <sighs> So Sirius then tries to redeem the situation slightly by saying that if he hears he's using these lessons to give Harry a hard time, he'll have to answer to him. And Snape basically like just doesn't care and is like, how touching. But surely you've noticed that Potter is very like his father. And Sirius is all proud and goes, yes, I have. And then Snape goes, well, then you'll know he's so arrogant that criticism simply bounces off of him. 
<laughs> Here's Harry in the middle, like, what do I do? <laughs> I know, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, Well, then a duel's literally about to happen here in Grimald Place, in the kitchen. Both of Maybe them. Maybe in the kitchen. It's going <laughs> down. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take this to the kitchen. <laughs> what does Mrs. Weasley say? And just because you doesn't mean you need to whip, whip out your wands. your wands for everything. But what does she say? The first part of that line. Just, just because, because you like are you can or something. Or something. Wands. I can't remember it. Just because Mrs. you Weasley. can do magic. Yeah. Doesn't mean you need to whip your wands out for everything. <gasps> Brie, meet him outside. Meet him outside. Meet <laughs> <laughs> him outside. Meet him outside. Meet him, meet him. Uh, so Sirius is <laughs> livid and Snape is calculating. And I said that is so very Gryffindor and Slytherin of them both. Why don't you go back to playing with your chemistry set? <laughs> That's what he says, doesn't it? Yeah, in the movie, at least. Uh, it says Sirius is living. I meant living. Well, he is for now. <laughs> he is <laughs> living currently. That hurts. Um, Yikes, Saru. So at this point, Sirius then calls Snape Civilis. Snivelis. Sorry. Snivelis. He's very civil. <laughs> he is not civil. He's not civil. Civilis. Not even a little. Civilis. Ever loving Civilis. <laughs> um, and basically, they just start insulting each other. Um, Snape then drops the news at this point that Luscious recognized Sirius at King's Cross and that Sir- that mm. Snape thinks Sirius did this on purpose so that he would have a- an excuse to stay in hiding and Ooh. not have to do anything for the order. So, but like, how did Lucius Rude. notice him? I don't know. He must have just known somehow that Sirius is an animagus. Who Thank you. I knew it was stuck in my head. <laughs> who could have it? told? But yeah, how would he have known that? Is what I don't know. Who knows? Um, S- Snape. Like I don't know. Maybe the word. I don't know. I guess Snape. Like who else would have? <laughs> to oh, me, like that's oh, the only way you know. Him. Him. Wait, what? Tail. Peter Pettigrew. Hello. Oh, hello. Wormtail. Peter. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> my name's Peter. Peter Pettigrew. What a trash rat. What a, uh, what he's a worse rip. than the worst of the worst. You know what I'm saying? I know yeah. what you're Who, saying. What is this? This is not Florence. Uh, I don't know what this is. That's somebody was. new. Well, she's not getting a name. <laughs> oh, my <She's>, God. <laughs> <laughs> but any whoosies, we don't like Peter Griffin. I mean, we do. I'm talking what, about Peter Pettigrew. What I don't know what's going on. Are we talking about family Get guy? Are we talking about Harry Potter? Uh, okay, that's so, oh my gosh. like, at this point, like, this is about to get bad. They're so mad at or each other. so good. And then literally so the school. second it's about to turn, the whole Weasley family plus plus Hermione just... Well, not the entire family. Percy's not there. <sighs> well, true. Whoa. Uh, they all just come right into the kitchen, and they all look so happy. And it's such an awkward turtle. What? Yeah. I forget that this is how it the happened scene. and not how it is in the movies where they're celebrating Christmas with him at oh, home. Oh, yeah. No, like when he when they come in, I like it's such an awkward turtle moment. It's like, like cured, all cured. And then it's like this tension and it's like, what? I know. It's so <laughs> awkward. Um so it was about to get real bad real quick when the Weasley family comes in and they are all happy and they announce that Mr. Well, Mr. Weasley announces that he's been completely cured, but then he notices clear and obvious tension. Um, you know, <laughs> they all just freeze on the threshold and gaze at the scene in front of them, which was also suspended in mid-action, both Sirius and Snape looking toward the door with their wands pointing into each other's faces, and Harry immobile Mm. between them because he had, like, jumped in the middle and was like, no, Um, trying to force them apart. He had a hand stretched out to each of them. Let me just say, a 15-year-old is trying to separate two 33 year olds what are they 33 something like that i think From they're older than that literally also quite like powerful yeah I'm, yeah you know yeah <laughs> um especially with one uh, you gotta you gotta have some you know right, angry yeah. in your heart to point your wand oh, at someone's face tiffany yeah. 
they do hate each other. Oh, do they? Someone was going to die, but it wouldn't have been me. This no, is thank news. you, because I was not in this world. This is new. I was also only like five. They were born in 60. 60. So they they were 35. 35. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep. Yup. So, Mr. Weasley asks, what is going on? And both Sirius and Snape look at each other with contempt. However, all of, like, the commotion of what just happened and all the witnesses standing right there kind of brings them to their senses. And Sirius is just, like, the Snape leaves after he just, like, walks out. And Sirius tells Arthur just a friendly little chat between two old school (laughs) friends. Um, but then he just changes the conversation to Mr. Weasley because he just wants, he just wants this, uh, not, he just doesn't want to focus on it. So then Arthur says, healer Smethwick worked his magic in the end, found an antidote to whatever that snake's got in its fangs. Actually, I'm sorry. This is Mrs. Weasley talking. And Arthur's learned his lesson about dabbling in muggle medicine. Haven't you, dear? (laughs) Um, so during... During dinner. Do we know? Sorry to interrupt you. Do we know what he did? Like stitches? Oh, stitches. To cure. Oh, to cure. Oh, the actual cure? Yeah. I have no idea. I don't think we find out. An antidote, whatever that is. You sit, you stand on your head and drink some chocolate milk. I'm sure that there's like, I'm sure that there's some combinations of potions, ingredients that they probably. Gave him some clotting factors. Tested and came up with. Something that worked and got lucky or something is my guess. Dude, you want to talk uh, Mungo's medicine things? Talk to Meg. We've had like lengthy conversations of how magical maladies, not maladies, would be cured. Kill it! And she's coming with like some crazy stuff that like, I get it. It's cool. We should do an episode. Do on you that. want to do that on a Felix file? Yeah. That could be fun. Bum, bam, bam, bam. Meg, don't mess Let's around. do uh Magical Miladies Felix <laughs> file. That'd be fun. <laughs> Miladies. That's driving. That'd be fun. Yeah. Um, Miladies and my lords. <laughs> and my dudes. <laughs> my bras. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I mean, fan fiction stuff really just gives you a ton of ideas. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm telling sure. like it blew when my mind. When you have to so. write scenes about how about things my are, ladies and my lords, if you know what <laughs> I how mean. How things are getting cured, you come up with some cool <laughs> stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I came up with a whole way that you could cure a werewolf. I'm just saying. That I mean, was legit. Cool. Anyway. Um, so <laughs> Mr. Wait, I already said that. So uh Sirius. So Sirius is brooding over dinner, but he's trying pretty poorly to hide it. And Harry's noticing him trying to just like put on a face and laugh whenever the Twins are telling a joke or smile at Mr. Weasley. Um, But Harry just wanted to go over there and talk to him and tell him to not listen to what Snape said. And basically Snape was goading him deliberately. And, uh, you know, everybody knows. Everybody knows that he didn't do that on purpose. And he just wants to go and comfort his godfather. So I wish he had, but Hmm. we'll get to that. It's just (sighs) such a sad tweet. I know. Yeah. So do you ever get like that though? Like after like a big party, sorry, and Katie, okay. that like or something like a big event, and then it's like the next day, it's Christmas. like it's all over. Yeah, like that's genuinely yeah. why I I love the season of Christmas, but I don't care for Christmas Day as then it's much. Over. You know what I mean? Because it's like it's a big build up, yeah. and then like for serious, you know, he had all of these people at his house, and I know they're leaving, and he really hasn't had a lot of like human contact in the past however many years. You know what I mean? Like how. Um, yeah it's really sad after traveling i have a pretty big crash Mm -hmm. it's like after like once that last day comes and we're sitting at the airport it's just like oh what's an airport i know so what is an airport oh my gosh (laughs) for real it's been a minute here's my thing though like i get sad after christmas but i always get this like fresh start feeling as well and i get that when i get home from traveling too like it just feels so good home from traveling i love love, leaving i love routine but i love coming home into my own bed amen um but i mean i love going and doing and like having fun obviously like when i travel but 
there's nothing like sleeping in my own bed. I agree. I but my that's to say, no if if the world decided I did not need to sleep in my own bed, aka I could travel again, Ooh. I would be mad. I want to go to St. Louis. I want to go anywhere. Like I really want to go to St. Louis. I literally but I can't. Just, <laughs> I want to go somewhere. <laughs> you can come to Ohio. Okay, couple wah, weeks. Wah. Ohio is great. <laughs> <laughs> it's for I'm lovers, I hear. Get a good old <laughs> glass of apple cider when we get up there. Yeah, <laughs> apple cider yeah. doesn't exist down here. It's apple juice. It's literally just apple juice, and they change the label and they lie to you. Yeah, it's disgusting. There's nothing better than some. That some is apple super cider. bogus. Yeah, doesn't exist. All right, okay. well, Katie, we'll let you go ahead and do your bit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, during dinner, Harry very quietly tells Ron and Hermione that he about having to take these occlumency classes with Snape. And Hermione's like, well, Dumbledore probably wants to stop the dreams that you're having about Voldemort. And like, you probably won't be sorry not to have them anymore. And then there's Ron who says, I'd rather have the nightmares. Um, and then Were you oh. talking really fast? No. <laughs> you sounded like you were sped up to Sarah and I. <laughs> That's so weird. No. It was super weird. I think my internet was trying to catch up. <laughs> that happens to me on FaceTime sometimes. Like the uh, video will speed up. Like whoever on the other side looks like they just went into like triple time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Sometime in the Discord, I go very high pitch and shit monkey apparently. So I have no idea. Um, oh, so that's the, great. The plan was to go back to Hogwarts via the night bus. And they would be es escorted once again by Tonks and Lupin. I really enjoy how much time they're spending together because I think it's going to turn out great. <laughs> <laughs> the next morning, um, all the adults were in the kitchen. And when the trio comes in, they very quickly stop having a whispered conversation. So I don't know what that was about. Maybe about the fight from last night. I don't know. Um, and then I wanted to read this from the book because I really feel for Harry and Sirius, but I've... I've been in Harry's shoes before, in a way. Mm -hmm. So, after a hurried breakfast, they pulled on jackets and scarves against the chilly gray January morning. Harry had an unpleasant, constricted sensation in his chest. He did not want to say goodbye to Sirius. He had a bad feeling about this parting. He did not know when they would see each other, and he felt that it was in incumbent upon him to say something to Sirius to stop him doing anything stupid. Harry was worried that Snape's accusation of cowardice had stung Sirius so badly he might he might even now be planning some foolhardy trip beyond Grimald Place. Before he could think of what to say, however, Sirius had beckoned him to his side. Yes. Mm. I'm just thinking, like, I wonder if, like, he had a gut feeling like yeah. something was going to happen. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, has it mm -hmm. ever happened? Like, that's happened to me before. Where, like, yeah. I just mm -hmm. know something's off. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that and he, he knows what he's leaving him with. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I think, it's and a that's an ominous feeling in itself, mm -hmm. and especially with his suspicion <sighs> about creature, Super his mood, suspicious. his location. You know, all of that stuff's running in his head too. Yeah, trust your intuition. It's it's not wrong. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, <sighs> Serious. I just want to give him a hug. It makes it's just just gonna suck. I know. It's just gonna suck. Well, no. yes, it is. So Sirius kind of like pushes this package into Harry's hand and it's like badly wrapped, which I would totally picture serious, not taking any time to wrap anything. Um, and it's kind of the size of a paperback book. And he's like, I want you to take this. And Harry's like, well, what is it? And Sirius said, it's a way for you to let me know if Snape starts giving you a hard time. Um, and Harry goes to open it, but Sirius is like, no, not here. Like, I don't think Molly would approve. Just use it if you need me. All right. Yes. This sucks. This sucks. Big time. This sucks. I know. But it saves Harry's life. Yes. Yeah. Foreshadowing. This sucks. <sighs> Do you know why it sucks? Because it sucks to suck. I don't know. Is somebody going to die? It could have been used. <sighs> it yeah. could have been used. It could have been used. Instead of breaking into Umbridge's office, getting caught, getting a fake message from Creature, going to the ministry, people are getting spells yeah. thrown at him. But on the other hand, you know, comes in very useful. 
And it's a good thing that Harry keeps the broken piece of this. No kidding. Like, if he would have thrown it away, keeps his wand, too. (laughs) Do you know what we're talking about? Are you all right? She's... She's losing it. But I just like, it just, it just sucks. Like It's so sad. Oh, she's crying. <laughs> My bad. I thought she was laughing. No, I mean, I'm laughing because I'm like trying not to cry. Like I just, you're just so thinking bad. about what I'm saying and it's like, oh yeah, no, like, this is awful. It just sucks that like he's gonna like die. And like, then Harry has like one less person. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, yeah. oh, I can't talk about it. <laughs> Good thing you so got a podcast sad. that you got to talk about it on coming up. <laughs> uh, it'll be like next year we'll be talking about it by the uh, time we get to it. But no, it's it's just. <sighs> but thank, but he, but he, but it comes back. So it's like Sirius kind of has like a hand in saving Harry's life later when the the mirror eventually falls into Aberforth's hands and he sends Dobby. If you didn't know what I was talking about, this is the the mirror that. Aberforth uses Harry sees a piercing blue eye through it um, and begs for help from the Malfoy Manor basement and um, Aberforth sends Dobby to to save them and so it's like Sirius kind of has a hand in saving Harry's life yeah yeah oh now I'm gonna cry it's just so sad it's like another one of those like lessons that like you know they're heading into war and war is messy. You know what I mean? Like when people fight, like people lose loved ones. So it's very much like, unfortunately a realistic thing that people have to go through when it sucks. Yep. <sighs> mm-hmm. You're well, welcome for bringing the mood down. It's going to get even suckier. So, um, <laughs> Harry's like, all right, you know, but he knows that he's never going to use whatever it is because he's dang well sure. Not going to be the one that lures Sirius out of his place of safety, no matter how bad Snape would treat him. Like he's not going to put him in that situation, Uh. but it kind of happens anyway. So, um, so Sirius claps him on the shoulder and he like gives him a grim smile. And before Harry can say anything, he's got all these things he wants to say to him. He's got bad feelings about this. He just wants to tell Sirius almost like, you know, it's okay. We understand everything we've already said. Um, they're already heading upstairs to the front door Mrs. Weasley's hugging him. Mr. Weasley shakes his hand. He's like, hey, keep out for snake. Keep an eye out for snakes for me. Thanks. And Harry's <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. He's like very distracted. And uh, quote, it was his last chance to tell Sirius to be careful. He turned, looked into his godfather's face and opened his mouth to speak. But before he could do so, Sirius was giving him a brief one armed hug. He said gruffly, look after yourself, Harry. And the next moment, Harry found himself being shunted out into the icy winter air. Have you ever mm. had... Like, I bet Harry goes back to this all the time and is like, what if I just said something? I should have been there for him. But, like, have you ever been in that situation where, like, I don't know, like, something's happening and, like, you, no matter what you're trying to do, you either can't speak or, like, just craziness is happening. But later on, you're still going to beat yourself up about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I, it makes me super sad. I feel for Harry because this is probably something he feels so guilty about, even though it's not his fault at all. Like, just think if he in Cursed Child is still thinking about Cedric. Yeah. Cedric. Yeah. Think about how often he thinks about Sirius. Oh, yeah. (sighs) Daily. Yeah. And like, just like that, um, the door slams shut, house disappears, and like, they're getting on the night bus. And Harry, points out to us that Tonks seems nervous. She's disguised, but like she seems very nervous about getting out of there quickly. Hmm. Hmm. Why is she nervous? I don't know. Because she's next I think to the man she's so loves. on the open. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um I'm like super sad. Same. So <laughs> yeah. Well I wish I had a playlist right. for this. <laughs> coming soon i had one Spotify. made but i didn't name it that because i didn't want people to like be worried that i like have a sad songs playlist i just really like here's the thing the reason- every time she puts on music it is so <laughs> it's always so sad, sad. That is not true. what did i play today that was not sad what'd you play oh uh, well it's sad or not appropriate <laughs> Um, but I like a lot of sad songs. So I, okay. One way that I one I just like to sing along the songs, but also like it helps my anxiety be able to like, 
<laughs> Adele sing to songs. You know what I mean? Like yeah, how no, I, no, no, I know. Like I think I sound like her, which is a lie. Hold I know on. I don't. Are your dreams like coming true? Like sad songs with Sarah is going to be a thing now. It's always been a thing with but me. But it's going to be like a Spotify thing. It, I have a playlist. It's just not called Sad well, Songs. Well, it's going to be called. But I like them because I like to sing along with them because sometimes they're like ballady. You know what I mean? She likes to belt it. Yeah. So, bang, the night bus has arrived. <laughs> Sorry if that's here, everyone. <laughs> A thin, pimply, jug-eared youth in a purple uniform leapt down onto the pavement. Leapt onto the pavement. That's a quote from the book. I like that it's a youth. Um, So they don't know, except for Harry. Like, this is Stan who's welcoming them. So he's like, oh, welcome to. And Tonks is like, ah, yeah, 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 we know. And so she, like, cuts them off. She gets them all onto the (laughs) night bus. Um, And I'm going to tell you, if you don't know, the night bus is a triple-decker purple AEC Regent 3RT. And that assists the stranded individuals of the wizarding community through public transportation. It operates at a very fast speed and obstacles will jump out of its way. And it can also be deceptively... Wait, nope. Also, hold on. And can also deceptively fit through small spaces. Um, to hail the bus, a witch or wizard must stick their wand in their wand hand in the air in the same manner that a muggle might do while hailing a muggle bus in the United Kingdom, though it is possible to book tickets for travel on the bus in advance. Things jump out of the way for yes. it. Yeah. But like how magic. is everything magical? Magic. Or do like the bus lights like cast spells on things so if it's like shining on it like maybe there's move. like <laughs> get out the way <laughs> move bush get out the way because <laughs> bushes do literally get out of the way for it <laughs> you know I just thought but about I that wonder, I'm like that's weird I wonder if it's like covered in a bubble that like enables it that's not a word enables 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 it things to like go out of its way or like swoosh into in between the cards. You mean swish? Sure. Um, I'm also reading this from the Wikia. Um, And it's described as violently purple in case anybody cares. So it's a relatively modern invention in wizarding society, which sometimes though it will rarely admit it, it takes ideas from the muggle world. Like uh, what else did they take? Plumbing, indoor plumbing. So the need for some tr- form of transportation that could be used safely and discreetly by the underage or the infirm had been felt for a while, and many suggestions had been made. Sidecars on taxi-style broomsticks, that's crazy, are carrying baskets under slung under thestrals, but they were all vetoed by the ministry. So let's see where this comes from. Oh, this is a writing that the author wrote about the night bus on her website. Were they vetoed or devetoed? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I'm really excited that you um, said something. And finally, the night bus was first commissioned in 1865. The idea was proposed by the then minister, Dugald McFail. McFail. Huh. Did he fail? Your your last name is McFail, but you Mc, Mc won with the night bus. Uh, <laughs> Mc succeeded. I would like a McRib. <laughs> no. A rib witch? I, I, because of the Simpsons, I won't eat that. While some wizards, mainly pureblood fanatics, announced their intention of boycotting what was dubbed this muggle-esque outrage, um, in the letters page of the Daily Prophet, the night bus proved highly popular with most of the community and remains busy to this day. And it says during the 1900s, except that's not what it says, it says during the ne- early 1990s, the bus's conductor was Stan Sean Pike, who we'll talk about a little bit later on in my section today who greets passengers and handles baggage. And it was driven by Ernie praying. Earn. Take her away. Earn. Um, And then I won't go super into the description of the, um, (laughs) night bus because we're going to talk about it. Oh my gosh. Your laugh. (laughs) That was the, that was the head thing. Shrunken I know, but it was so good. Oh, well, thank you. I have not been so, impressed. Sarah's like, I would like to get through this article. <laughs> All of these peeps are now getting on the bus. So Harry has, or nope, Tonks is Harry, like basically get on first and Harry, or Stan recognizes him, but she shuts him up. 
because she, they really probably, she doesn't want a lot of attention on him, but you know, it's Harry Potter. And she tells him, if you shout his name, I will curse you into oblivion. <laughs> oh, dang. And then like the rest of the kids get on the bus. Um, and then, you know, it talks about like the last time that Harry had been on this bus, it had been full of beds because he was on there during the time of night, nighttime. And now it's daytime. Ha, 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 ha. It's daytime. Don't ask me what that was because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's full of chairs and they're like all mismatched and stuff. And he re- notices that like it seems that some of the chairs were knocked over. Like when the bus um, stopped to pick them up from Grimmauld Place. And like it's even noted that like people had to like were kind of like picking themselves up also off of the ground. Um, and someone had like cockroaches in her bag. Why? Uh, magic what? magical Ooh. things potions potions ingredients so then a little roach sh- stew sh- if uh, you will cockroach uh circus. cluster aren't those sure. just candy who oh yeah cockroach clusters you're right um so Tonks has to have them split up because there's not enough like seats for them to be all together so fred george Ginny. Um, and Remus all go together to like the back of the bus, I believe. And then she stays with Harry, Ron and Hermione and they all head upstairs where there's like two seats on like opposite sides. So like Harry and Ron go to sit together and then Tonks and Hermione go sit together. Um, and Harry notices that like while he's walking to like where he's going to sit down, like a lot of heads are turning his way. Um, cause they want to see a peek of the Harry Potter. Um, and Stan's also right behind him. Cause you know, he's got to talk to him. And he has them give him 11. I don't know why I said 11 like that. You're fine. Um, sickles each. Because that's the price of a ticket. How much muggle <laughs> money is that? Um, and then they like, you okay, know. No. What did you say? I, I want to know how much muggle money that is. Oh. Well, there's 17 sickles to a galleon. That there's tells so me nothing. nothing. <laughs> and a, and a sickle. It's easy to 493 nut uh, canuts in a galleon. I don't get it, if I'm being honest. But anyways, I don't know math. Um, What's a number? Integers. <laughs> a number is one. So <laughs> off they go. They're leaving um, Grimmauld Place with a bang, basically. And in that process, not Ron gets knocked over and he like falls onto Pig's, pig's cage. Um, and so he breaks out. Wait, is he a boy or a girl? Doesn't Who? matter. The the owl gets out of the pig? cage. Yeah. I don't know. Doesn't matter. It's just an owl. Yeah. Who cares? Um, pig gets out of his cage or their cage. And um he the bird then goes, Piglet goes and sits on Hermione's shoulder. They're friends. Um, instead of hanging out with Ron, which you know, I'm sure Ron would also like to hang out with Hermione too. So let's talk about Stan Sean Pike. He's a guy. He's a wizard. I feel um, bad for him. Same. He was the conductor and helper of the night bus. Again, this is from the Wikia. Um, and then s- this uh, on September 14th, which is crazy because that literally was f- f- how many days ago? This two, three, four, two, three, three days ago, three. I was going to get it. it <laughs> On September 14th, 1996, he was arrested and sent to Azkaban for being a death eater when he was overheard claiming to have inside information about the organization. Although in all likelihood, he was only fooling around. In 1997, he broke free from prison and joined the death eaters under the imperious curse. His fate after the war is unknown. He most likely awoke from the curse following Lord of all the <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> Voldemort. Voldemort. <laughs> That's the episode title. I will type it. No one touch it. Oh god. Voldemort. What? It, what about Voldemort. Lord Voldemort? What did you say? He was a. He was cursed. Ultimate. I was gonna say ultimate defeat. The curse following Voldemort. Lord Voldemort. <laughs> Milady <Malayan> and um, Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> like all other imperious victims and return to his job. So the poor guy, I don't know where they get this information from, but he was born sometime in between September 15th, 1947 and September 13th, 1975. Um, cool. I don't know if I said that right. 74 and 75 and possibly grew up in the inner London. He had a strong Cockney accent. It is unknown if he ever attended Hogwarts. I feel like, well, like it said that he like looked when Harry first sees him, he looked like he would have been fresh out of Hogwarts by like a year or two, I believe straight out of Hogwarts. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's a conductor of the night bus. 
Um, and he, so it says he was a skilled motorist, I guess, but not a man of high intelligence. As such, Stan failed to recognize Harry Potter, who had just fled from Privet Drive, number four, and instead believed his alias of Neville Longbottom. But, like, why would you know when he's 13 exactly who Harry looks like? I wouldn't, that does not shock me. But I guess it's just me. So when talking to Harry and others on the night bus, he showed his love of gossip and having inside information. He was shocked when Harry nonchalantly spoke the name Voldemort. And even when later meeting up with Cornelius Fudge, who confirmed Harry's true identity, Stan continued to refer to Harry as Neville for the rest of the trip. What are you shaking your head about? <laughs> Megan. <laughs> um, and then he attended the Quidditch World Cup. And after the match, Stan and several others were witnessed by Harry and Ron trying to chat up a group of Vila um, with Stan making the outrageous and false comment of him being about to be made the youngest minister of magic ever. I love it. To oh in, um, with an effort to impress them. And so with the second wizarding war, we see um, he meets him again. And along with Ron and his siblings, they're, while well, they're being transported by the night bus to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry in 1996. Stan this time realized who Harry was, though made the mistake of blurting out his name to his friend and the driver, um, Ernie Prang. Harry's primary bodyguard, the expertly disguised Nora. What is wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> or Nymphadora Tonks. Nora! <laughs> just, you know, slap all of them together. Um, who threatened to curse Stan into oblivion if he did it again as they were concerned for Harry's security. And then, you know, tried to impress his friends, talking about inside stuff with Death Eaters, um, which led to him being, um, his house being raided by Rufus Scrudgemere, who was <laughs> 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 wrong with you? I think I need Scrunch to just me. stop today because Scrunch clearly me. I I'm not laughing at you. You're just so good. I love, I love how you're literally laughing at me, but you just said you're not laughing at me. But anyways, you know the Minister of Magic, Mr. Old Rufus. Scrudge Mirror, as I said, he found out, <laughs> raped his home, took him into custody. He was arrested, sent to Azkaban, and then he, um, uh, and this, uh, this says he was one of the reasons why Harry refused to cooperate with the minister or serve as the poster child, which I don't blame him because he refused. Harry f refused to believe that Stan could have been a death eater. Um, and then the interrogation with Stan revealed that he was, had absolutely no link with the death eaters, but the ministry <laughs> kept him in order to pull it up a facade of progress. Stupid. Um, <sighs> There's a lot more to go, and I don't think we really need to know. We'll do a feel like files time. on them. Yeah. Um, Good old Stan. Good old Stanley. Every time Stan I say Stanley, Stanley, I just think about Stanley the from The Office. And then I, <laughs> I love like yeah. Pretzel Day. I love Pretzel Day. Is it Pretzel, pretzel Day? day? <laughs> um, Have you lost your mind, boy? Because I'll help you find it. <laughs> <laughs> Stanley Stanley, the carpet cleaner. Ow! Oh my god, that's such a good video. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so he's then talking to Harry because that's how Stan likes to, you know, live life. And he asks him like how he's been, and that he's like, you know, I read your name a lot in the paper recently. Yeah, it's not not such good news, bro. He doesn't say it like that, but you know. He also says that Harry doesn't seem crazy. He's like, you didn't seem crazy when I met you however many years ago. Um, but then he finally like gives him his tickets. Um, and I forgot that I wanted to read from the chapter. So let's read. Um, Page 526. 526. Please turn I just to like page the description. 526. Sorry. <clears throat> So looking towards the front of the bus, Harry saw Hermione cover her eyes with her hands. Pig Widgeon, is that how you would say that? Mm -hmm. um, was still swaying <laughs> happily on her shoulder. Bang! Chairs slid backward again as the night bus jumped from the Birmingham motorway to a quiet country lane full of ha hairpin bends. Hedgerows on either side of the road were leaping out of their way 
as they mounted the verges from there th- or from here. <laughs> You're reading it like that. <laughs> You're reading it like this. I know, because I'm like trying to make sure that I'm reading it correctly. It sounds like the Department of Mysteries lady <laughs> voice. <laughs> from here, they moved to a main street in the middle of a busy town, then to a viaduct surrounded by tall hills, then to a wide, nope, then to a windswept road between high rise flats, each time with a loud bang. I've changed my mind, <laughs> muttered Ron, picking himself up from the floor for the sixth time. I never want to ride on here again. I wouldn't want to ride on that. I'd bark. You would be you would vomiting. Not do well. As a matter of fact, <laughs> you would, would be like the next it. lady. So Stan kind of comes back and tells them to let them know like that their stop. They have one stop and then like theirs is next. Um and the boss lady that was with them wanted them like wanted him to tell them that like get ready because we're like getting off um and if you don't know who the boss lady is he's talking about tongs so he just wants them to let them let them know like madam marsh they have to get her off first (laughs) and then their stop is coming so they can literally hear her retching below them she's downstairs um so soon the bus bus screeches to a stop and they can hear madam marsh being let off of the bus then bang they were off again leading to a snowy hogsmeade um and i googled Madam March, Madam Marsh, Marsh, um, and that's Tiffany's nickname because I truly Tiffany would be vomiting everywhere. Um, <laughs> but I guess she was in. Call me Marshy. Um, Madam Marsh wore a traveling cloak around aboard the bus while traveling to Abergavenny. I think you read that pretty well. And then that was in 1993. And in 1996, we see her again. She vomited all over the second deck of the night bus when she traveled to a pub in 1996. Quit riding um, the night um, bus, lady. And this <laughs> says, on, in the notes, it says, Madam Marsh is, according to the author, simply in, quote, extra with no further part to play in the saga. Um, I'd play her in the movies. Be me. You do a great job. I just didn't remember her being in. Yeah. Yeah. She's in chapter three, the night bus of uh, Mm -hmm. the third, the third book in the series. (laughs) Fun facts. (laughs) (laughs) Scratch me here. (laughs) <laughs> what? Nora. <laughs> Nora. Hold on, I gotta add that to the title. <laughs> oh gosh. So the bust then they go through Hogsmeade. It's beautiful and snowy. It's gorgeous. You know what I mean. The bus then stops. What are you doing? Because you're moving things around <laughs> on here. If you mess up again, I don't have any more room for this title. <laughs> yeah, but you were moving things, so that moved the whole thing down, is what I'm saying. Oh, I didn't know you were talking to me. Um, I don't know who was doing it. It was me. So the bus stopped in front of the gates of Hogwarts, and I really wanted to say the pearly gates, but they're not pearly. So Remus and Tonks help them get off the bus, get all their stuff together, and like then they like gather to say goodbye. So Harry notices that like all of the passengers that are left in the bus are kind of like looking out the window at him. They're like, Whoa. What you doing? Are you Harry Potter? Um, then talk, Tonks lets them know that they are safe once they are inside the gates um, and on the grounds of Hogwarts. So I wonder, like, is this foreshadowing? Because, like, that's not always true. You're not always going to be safe. Oh, no, no. You know, Hagrid lied to us way early in the beginning of this. <laughs> right? No place safer. Like a liar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, true. every year there's something bad happening. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm going to read from the chapter again because Remus kind of says goodbye to all of them and he wants to talk to Harry kind of like on his own. And he says, and listen, he lowered his voice while the rest of them exchanged last minute goodbyes with Tonks. Harry, I know you don't like Snape, but he is a superb Aquamans and we all, serious included, want you to learn to protect yourself. So work hard. All right. Yeah, all right, said Harry heavily, looking up into... Nope, I almost said the Snapes. <laughs> into Lupin's prematurely lined face. See you then. Um, so he says his goodbye to Lupin. And then the kids, like, basically all trudge up to the entrance, like the big doors that open to Hogwarts. <laughs> Don't ask me why I said it like that. And they're dragging their luggage with them. Um, and Harry looks back to see like the bus was already gone and part of them wished he was still on it. But let's talk about this. Let's talk about how long 
is that trail from the gates to the front entrance of Hogwarts. Cause I don't think it's short. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they yeah. have to trudge all of their luggage up. Like yeah. send like what? Why? Why? How does everyone else get back in? For snow you know what I mean? and stuff. Mm. You know? Yeah. It's cold. Cause it always talks about like once they're on the carriages, they're like, Oh, it's like 80 years. And they finally get to the front entrance. Right, he has to listen to time. Hermione talk about knitting more hats for the owls. I'd like a hat. I don't think you'd want a Hermione hat, though. Yeah, it's probably true. But long way, five k <sighs> minimum. Somebody knit me a hat. Do you think though? <laughs> That's a long way. I, That's I a couple of miles. At least a mile. I'm gonna. I guess. would say at least a mile. At least. But like, how long? Oh. Like, how long does it take you to walk a mile? With, I think with you're luggage. Trudging. Yeah. Like yeah. Minutes, a long time. Longer. 30 you too need long to, you'd be totally in the cold swole. in january it, up a hill with my brother on my back <laughs> <laughs> it was uphill both ways <laughs> long time true that's the half this was a whole long chapter i like looked at it i was like oh whoa whoa i know well whoa. You, the second half of the chapter seems like a whole different chapter because it's so vastly different you know, because we, if you think about it, like when we're at the end of the next one, we're it's so like deep and sweaty. And then at the beginning, it's like, oh, we were just a grim old place. It's like it's so weird. Ask me questions. Megan, are you going to do it? Can we do something fun for the lightning bolt rounds? Like answer questions like in Florence's voice or like sing them or something. I'll sing them. You in do a you, high boo. Yeah, okay, you're the only way to here's a, here we'll make this rule. The only ways to answer the questions are either singing or in Florence. I'm down. What about, Move your water bottle, so Barty? No, I don't know what you mean by Barty? No, yeah, Stephanie's oh, Barty. Saying Barty. People want it. Takes so much out of oh, to do that, that voice. <laughs> I was Man. real confused. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, you have you, to do Terry it then. <laughs> no. Facts. Oh! <laughs> Do so. it in some way that is not your normal voice. Something. Yeah, I'm into it. I can't do Barty the whole time. Everybody. You can also sing. Meg, your okay. answer has to be uh, Okay, it. I'm going to sing. Normal. I'm going to sing it. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Vinny, or Spot of Vinny, actually. Spot of Vinny <laughs> asks, the game, the video game, is set in early 1800s Hogwarts. So which character would you like to see or someone related to a character we know. Hmm. Dumbledore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I want to see like Albus Dumbledore, man. Show but me a little, like, uh, the relationship, I man. If it's Dumbledore. in the early, what does that mean? 1800s? Is he there? No. I don't know. Is he what? not? No. When was he born? It 18. doesn't. It Late just says 1800s. 1800s. It doesn't specify uh, when in the 1800s, just 1800s. Born in 1881. Well, that could be the 18. That's the 1800s. I'm going to say double dot two. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Holy mackerel. All right. Riley Let's asks, roll. if Sirius was nicer to Creature, do you think that he still would have betrayed him? Or would Creature have found a reason to return to Bellatrix and betray Sirius anyway? <sighs> I think he wouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I brought snacks. No. <laughs> I think <laughs> that things would have worked out in a different way. Per se. <laughs> hey, hey. I don't necessarily disagree, but... <laughs> I don't know. We have to sing it like church. <laughs> I don't think anything else would have changed. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> oh, I went to Catholic Jeez. school. I know. I know. Uh, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> I see you. Oh, um, that's hilarious. Isaiah asks, how far do you think the duel would have gone before someone stopped them? It would have gone to the death if nobody <laughs> stopped them. <laughs> it would have been very serious. You really think 
think so, even in front of Harry. I do think I so. I think that maybe some sparks would have flown. <laughs> maybe some singed robes, but no harm. No harm. I disagree. I think there would have been harm. <laughs> <laughs> We are too much sometimes, and I love it. <laughs> I'm not sorry. Ask the next question. Sam <laughs> asks, of the people who are good at occlumency, who would you want to learn it from? Uh, Remus Lupin. Draco. Is Remus good at it? You're not know. answering correctly. He's not on the list. He's not on the name, list. Can you name the people that are on the list? This is Malfoy. <laughs> I would like to learn from Slughorn. Oh, yeah. He I would have snacks. Him. I also but agree. I'd like to learn from Slughorn, too. <laughs> Give me some crystallized pineapple. <laughs> and I would hate cream. it if Malfoy taught me. He's easy on the eyes. Wait, <laughs> Slughorn? Yes. <laughs> Malfoy. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, to that? each their own. What if I like that man? Oh, man. Look at Draco that hottie. Malfoy. I can teach me any day. All right. Girl. Are we ready for the next one? I heard he's single. <laughs> ready to mingle. <laughs> Maybe not. He gives me a tingle. I'm so sorry. That was <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Lily asks, if you could have the he's whole up to series no good written back there. in someone else's perspective, who would it be? Remus Lupin. Draco Malfoy. Which what? What was the question? <laughs> if you could have the whole series written in someone else's perspective, who would it be? I think we all know my answer. Fluffy. Fang. <laughs> 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 then they came to the hut and I jumped in, I kissed them. <laughs> <laughs> I just want the snacks. No, Dumbledore. Can I eat that <laughs> steak? Draco Malfoy, I want to see your sad home life. Oh my oh. gosh, that's not okay. <laughs> Sarah. Oh my God. I do. I would like to see like Voldemort living in your home. Gotta Mrs. Be Norris, because then my theory would be proven. Right? There you go. Sure would. That's great, honey. Proven wrong. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Next question. Um, 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 <laughs> Caitlin Whoa. asks, do you think that the Death Eaters actually liked Snape and considered him a friend? Or do you think they all just pretended to be for one and pretended to be for one another since they were serving the same dude. They pretended. Don't kid yourself. Can you read it again? What? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can you read the question again? Sure. Uh -oh, we're going to switch. You never know what's going to happen around here. Do you think that the Death Eaters actually liked Snape and considered him a friend? Or do you think they all just pretended to be friends for one another since they were serving the same guy? <laughs> Meg, are you like, are you like, <laughs> I don't know who she is. You're trying to do British a lot of voices forms? over here, which is fine, but like also all right. All right. <laughs> I would say that they're, uh, do they have friends? I don't think so. They're all seem pretty friendless. <laughs> I think they're probably all very jealous. <laughs> Do they even have feelings? Like, yeah, they got feelings. I they think just like they have feelings. I think you know, they try to drink kill. If any episode is going to stop someone from listening to this podcast, it is the end of this one. <laughs> I don't know. We did, one. we did one when you were on your little maternity leave a couple of years ago. Um, that was the three of us. Mm -hmm. And we sang all the whole lightning bolt question. It's one of my favorite episodes. Uh oh, It's a grand one. We laughed a lot. Mm -hmm. Let's go on. That was Swish and Wine that night. I uh -oh. had wine. Everybody in the lead by us doing this. Oh, well, next question. <laughs> um, 
Uh, hold on. Sorry. Mm. Oh, Rachel. Rachel asks, why wouldn't Molly approve of the mirror? Do you think she would consider it dangerous? Maybe in the hands of an enemy. Like Umbridge, pussy? Yeah, because oh. if she called through the mirror and Sirius shows up on the other end. But like if some woman was calling Sirius, like I think he would know that like this is not Harry Potter. I don't know. Maybe he's got multiple mirrors he's handing out. <laughs> Well, I don't think it's going to hand one out to a toad face like person like uh, Umbridge. You know what I mean? Like, she's probably like nails on a chalkboard. Everybody you don't has want their it. Type. You don't like it. Everybody has their type. <laughs> Everybody has those days. Everybody makes mistakes. <laughs> Maybe um, Katie, you're just like, oh, I would say that I don't, I don't think Molly would like anything that can put Harry in trouble and also like, um, if Sirius is involved in a way that like, oh, how do I put this? If Sirius is involved in it and it's like a connection where like you're living in. Um, Sin with a safety No, pin? no, 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 no. Cleveland rocks. Cleveland does rock. But like he doesn't want, she probably doesn't want him to have like unfettered access to like Sirius to talk about like order things because Harry's not any order even though Sirius wants him to be Harry wants him to be uh but uh yeah no not her business no <laughs> sorry Iggy stopped on the keyboard and he hit the play button and it sounded like a horrible commercial it was like and we didn't know what was happening seriously like the key, like, what is going on? <laughs> Thanks, Ziggy. Good <sighs> boy. Oh boy. Okay. Sorry. Uh, what's the next question, please? Okay. The next question comes from a listener. <laughs> nope, rope. When Sirius called for creature, why didn't he operate to Grimald Place like when Harry called for him in book six at Hogwarts? I don't know. Maybe the same thing that uh, Dobby could do. I don't know. Maybe he had to like really punish himself. I I don't know. It would be a flaw. No. I wonder if he didn't do it because uh, he was also with like another member of the black family. Could be. I don't know how that works. But also it could be that, yeah, he had. Well, what he had punished himself, you think? I don't know if Creature would have done that. I don't know if he has any choice. I, I guess don't think he would have. I don't think he cared. Cared. I don't care. I'm making my own songs up now. All right. Mm-mm. Two more questions. Okay. All righty, Ruski. Heather asks, since Tiffany can't take the night bus, how would she travel? <laughs> she would walk very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> She get Crab Maddie crawl. to drive her all the way to oh, Scotland. Maddie. She'd call a stork and get on the stork's back and they would fly. Like in tots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, would carry her, she'd be carried like the thestrals with the thing slung underneath them. They would, I just talked about it. That uh, was one way that they were going to transport people was put like a, a thing under a, a thestral and fly. Transport. <laughs> Um, I would probably take a broom and maybe just like, you know, leviosa my trunk. You think you, you could handle flying? flying? No. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm going to take a Couldn't you just do like flu to a bunch of houses? Like flu to this house that's a little closer around I would this house. just, I would or, apparate with somebody. But like, Side can you along or whatever. Can you apparate that far? And can yeah. you flew that far? Like, could they flew in into like, mead. like and that's what I'm saying. Can you flew into Hogsmeade and be like, "Hey, <laughs> Hogsmeade residences, I need a flu." Right into the three brooms. A chew. Yeah. Do they even have a flu? The Hogshead I probably think. does. You think so? I yeah. think that there's one because the Ariana Dumbledore painting <sighs> is above. Perhaps. I could have made it up. That's above a fireplace? I, I don't know. 
Because that's really high to climb up into. You Listen, know what I mean? Because there's like it's a, a hole magical world. It. I don't know what that's goes true. on. You could open the thing and little stairs come I'm out. I'm gonna open my candle and see what's going on. Why don't we ask another question? All right, we got one more. This one comes from Sarah. She tells us to sort the Obamas. Ooh, they're in charge. That's how I sort them. Charge. Headmaster, headmistress together. I feel like they're both Gryffindor. I would agree. Mm. They're also both very smart and intelligent human beings, so it could be Ravenclaw. Or Slytherin. Claws. They're quite ambitious. Oh. <laughs> they're very hardworking. They're could all the houses. Oh no, are they all the houses? That's something we really got to uh gotta talk about. You know what? I'm gonna go Slytherin because you know. <laughs> I think Barack is a Ravenclaw and yes. Michelle is a Slytherin. I like it. I would agree. I like it. Do it. Barack. You Barack my world. You guys have a first name base <laughs> basis over there. That's all I got. Oh, that means it's my turn. It's okay. Do you have any questions for any of us? Do we all have questions? Do not anybody have questions? We don't do that anymore. Nobody ever has any questions. We might have Do answers. You? I don't know. I have to think about what happened in the chapter. A mantelpiece is on a flyer place, correct? I believe so. The old man's eyes traveled to the painting of the girl over the mantelpiece. Boom. Rusted. Well, look at, uh, let's look up mantelpieces because you never know. You never know what a mantelpiece is. I want to know piece? Are you a mantel? a mantelpiece Are you a Are you a mantelpiece? A structure of wood, marble, a stone above or and around a fireplace. You're welcome. You're welcome. My brain is working today. Katie, I want you to do this um, lovely lady's uh, story in a voice. Thank you. Oh, my God. Wait, what about a joke? <laughs> joke comes after. Oh, OK. Sorry. I don't know if I can do that. I would have picked a shorter one. <laughs> it's pretty short kidding. it is I it's know. a good size it's a good nice size i'm just kidding i don't know if i can I'm just joshing you <laughs> how about i do the first paragraph we'll decide when you're done oh my <laughs> gosh <laughs> this fan Scrunch story Mary says <laughs> comes from <laughs> megan joy schubert you got a good name. <laughs> Hello, my name is Megan Joy Schubert. I'm a proud Hufflepuff, and my <laughs> I can't. And my Patronus is good a thing. dolphin. Middle of the morning house is Puckwudgie, <laughs> and my wand is Ebony Wood, Dragon Heart and Core, nine th and three quarters in length, Ooh. slightly yielding flexibility. Now on to my Katie. Story. I'm surprised you didn't say anything about her both being a Hufflepuff and her Patronus is a dolphin. Yeah, oh my God, I'm, I'm sorry. I was distracted with the voice I was doing. That's freaking awesome. <laughs> We're like twins. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was distracted by me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so greatly distracted myself. <laughs> Now on to her Potter story. Yes. Uh, I can't remember when I got my first Harry Potter book, but by the time I started high school and my teacher asked the class who has read all the Harry Potter series, 11-year-old Megan was the only nerd in the class to enthusiastically raise her hand. Ever since then, the Harry Potter series has gotten me through some dark times with depression and eating disorders and an abusive, mani abusive manip manipulative relationship where I was controlled and afraid to escape. I've always been a people pleaser, and Luna taught me that it is okay to be your true, authentic self, no matter what others might think. She taught me it's okay to be bisexual and only be four foot nine and burst into song wherever you want. Luna taught me to find the love and happiness that you truly deserve and not let anyone else squash your joy, dreams, and hopes to make them happy. I started teaching. I start teacher training in September, teaching English at high schools, and hope to let a new generation of people know it's okay to be who you are, even if some people may think you are weird or a freak because you are never a freak. Everyone is special and important and unique, and it's amazing everyone's differences, and we should celebrate them. Harry bravely facing his fate taught me that it's okay to accept myself and come out to my friends and family and that being bisexual does not make me a freak or wrong. I love your podcast and thank you for all your hard work. I listen to you guys every day at work and you never fail to make me smile. I love this well story. Said. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Well, I am happy that you have figured out that it's okay to be yourself. You know, it takes a lot of people a really long time, you know, if, if they even get there. And so it's great to hear a story like this because you're right. 
it's perfectly fine to be your true authentic self. I love this so much. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. It took me a long time as well. And, you know, you still fight with it every now and then, but say in general, you know, finally, I feel pretty comfortable in my skin and Luna definitely is an excellent role model for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. So thank you, you are for, arcade. <laughs> thank you for sharing <laughs> your story. And I love that you want to spread that message to all the people you're going to be teaching. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. All right. I picked out a joke earlier today. Katie's got jokes. I don't remember what it was. So I like jokes. I should find it funny all over again. That usually happens to me. <laughs> all right. This is for anyone who might enjoy some uh, sports ball. I like serious. sports ball, but hopefully other people get it as well. Because if I didn't have mech, I wouldn't enjoy it, or I wouldn't get any of this. <clears throat> Why doesn't Hogwarts have a basketball team? I don't know. Why? They did once, but the team could only score nine in three quarters. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a low oh scoring my goodness. game. What? <laughs> you say you don't get it? No, I said, oh my god. You said it's a low scoring game. Okay. Good. Oh. Who's talking to who? I don't know. I have a question to ask. Okay. Sarah. How many Slytherins does it take to stir a cauldron? <laughs> <laughs> Just one. She puts her wand in and the cauldron revolves around her. <laughs> <laughs> Megan's like, accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them the website this is from. <laughs> <laughs> scarymommy.com <laughs> I've heard of them oh, Scary mommy. What do you call an electrocuted dark lord? A vault demort Oh my god <laughs> Lame Not a vault demort <laughs> Voldemort <laughs> Scratch me <here. laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. It's like Puddle Mirror United. Scratch Mirror United. Scratch Mirror United. Oh my god, that's our new Quidditch team, you guys. That's oh my the god. Like Quidditch Scratch team. Mirror Do we want United. him to be our in part of the name? Yeah, he's no, kind of a joke. But it's still funny. <laughs> oh SMU. God. I'm pretty SMU. sure. Is it SMU. Bill Nighy that plays him in the movie? Is he the guy that's in the seventh movie, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know who that is. You don't know who Bill Nighy but is? But sure. It's the actor. He's also in love. Actually, he's the guy that's like, yeah. I feel it in my fingers. <laughs> I feel, feel it, it in my, my toes. toes. There he is. <laughs> Christmas oh, yeah. is all around me. Come on and let it snow. You sound like Come Kermit. <laughs> yeah, he's also <laughs> Davy Jones in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Davy Jones. Oh, I was thinking about him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know who's in that? Is um Skarsgard. Alex Stellan Skarsgard. His son is Alex uh, and uh, Bill, uh. who plays Pennywise the Clown. Uh. Alec was in uh or Alex, excuse me, was in a lot of things. True Blood, um, that one show on HBO with the moms. The one right. show on called. HBO. We need to update our social media. Oh, I just broke my charger. I didn't break it, break it, but you know. You gotta say, where are we gonna be found? So you can find us on Facebook at Swish and Flick Podcast and also on Twitter and Instagram at Swish Flick Cast. You can follow your hosts. Myself and Katie are on Twitter and Instagram at The Petrus Family. Tiffany is on Twitter and Instagram at Tiff Swish underscore Flick. Sarah is on Instagram at O Mally with three H's. Um, we like to do stories on Instagram and go live sometimes before we record. So make sure that you go and turn your alerts on for our Instagram swish flick cast. If you love this podcast and want to support us and be a part of it, you can join us on Patreon to get access to our discord channel, which is awesome. Also gives you access to our bi-monthly bonus episodes, the Felix files, puff pastry and YouTube live Q and A's along with different, um, our by our by yearly. I don't know how to say that properly. I guess twice no, a year. No, not by yearly because it is twice a year. So by annual. By what's why don't you just say two know. times a year? Two times a year, <laughs> you get a swish swag box with all different types of cool, um, exclusive merch, 
And um, also, if you please wouldn't mind going and following us on Spotify, um, we just would appreciate it. And again, send us that screenshot and we will send you a sticker for following us. So make sure that you listen to Swish and Flick for free on Spotify. Spotify, 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 Hot Spotify. Spotify. That was beautiful. <laughs> Name that movie, please. Tell me where I get that from. Adelaide. <laughs> Why you got to give it to people? Nobody knows. <laughs> people will know. From Adelaide? Guys, who yeah. won the house cup No idea. If people don't. I don't know what happened, but Huff who Puff won? is killing it. Better be great in time between... I guess I could look. Somebody bring the... The uh, ride in the greenhouse is what I heard it was. Uh, Tiffany emoji in here. Slytherin. No, get out of here. It's not going to be Slytherin. Not tonight. Slytherin <laughs> one. Bring in the, the Tiffany Dumbledore, please. <laughs> Five million <laughs> points to Gryffindor. That's just... Yes! <laughs> Brandon. So congratulations, oh, Slytherin, God. for winning the House Cup tonight. Awesome. Yeah, good job. Tiffany, so what happy you do for you? <laughs> what am I yeah, doing? A do? lot of things, actually. Uh, I like that it tells us cups. Slytherin has five cups. Grimdor <laughs> and Rimclaw have three cups. It's like cups. Third it's a half or a cup. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're in last place. It's third or nothing. Wow. We've succeeded. Only by a technicality. Ha! Huh. All right. You're not that's funny. great. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I started reading um, The House of the Seven Gables, and I picked The Eye of the World back up and read a couple of chapters yesterday. So, that's still as good as ever. One would say it's eye-opening. It is eye-opening. It opens the eye to the world. Yes. Um, my nephew turned two today, so that's really exciting. Decorated for fall. Lady Supreme is wild and amazing and hilarious. Oh, like, every day she cracks me up. She has her aunt's love of skeletons, which brings joy <laughs> to my heart. <laughs> She likes the weirdest things, and I'm so happy. I love how like, much she's she just loves her own Nightmare unique person. Yes, she obsessed. <laughs> she calls it Christmas Jack, and she, she calls it Christmas Halloween. She calls it Christmas Jack too. I've never heard her say that. That's great. I live with her. You don't. <laughs> she named so I'm, we bought a skeleton. Um, well, I made my mom buy one for like a decoration, and she's obsessed with it. And I go, "What should his name be?" She's like, "Um, it's Jack." <laughs> so she literally like will color with him. She'll put a crayon in his hand to color with Jack. We put him in his sw her swing, and she pushes him. Obsessed. She's a unique individual, and I am here for it. And I have her Halloween costume. It's all washed and ready to go. She's going to be adorable. You'll see you later, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and I'm plugging away in my workouts. Katie and I and our friend Carrie. Shout out to Carrie. Come and me. Megan. Mm -hmm. Megs, join the crew. Megan's been joining us. I bike. So we had to add her to the group chat. What is it? You work out. The morning workout work crew. Out. Yeah, I, I, I work but out. we've been doing really well. Like we get up and I tell them to jump like frogs. She does. And I, and do. I lift and laugh at them doing cardio while I'm lifting. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany's like, I can't see you to yell at you. And I'm just like, yeah, did that on purpose. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> they knew you weren't there. The I'm going to make you like, start joining the FaceTime. <laughs> Listen, I just couldn't get out of bed. Yeah, I was I'm like, sorry. wait a minute. Where are you? Literally couldn't. No, but I've been having pretty good times. Teaching's going. That's all I'm going to talk about with that. <laughs> all I'm going to say about that. For real. What are you doing, Megan? I have been working on some technical things for our... Um, new partnership with Spotify so that has been keeping me busy but it's making me more excited um, and 
I have been, I've been organizing my desk because it needed help, but I got this little like stand thing for my computer monitor and it also has like some storage on it so I can like put some of the stuff that's been super annoying underneath my monitor so it's out of my way now and it is much more organized and I'm also getting a little cork board to put right next to my monitor so I can put my swish pins on it because I wanted somewhere to put them that's where where I have my pins I have a cork board right behind my computer and all of my pins are well not all of my pins but a lot of my pins like I have them just sitting on here but I'm like I need to like do something with them so Mm -hmm. um what else have I been doing? We've really been trying to up our content game with like YouTube and stuff. So I we have a lot of stuff that is going to be coming out and I'm really excited about it, both on Swish and Flick and the Petrus Family YouTube channels. So if you're not subscribed, I highly recommend. Actually, I should put that in our social media. Subscribe to us on YouTube. <laughs> so reminder to myself. Yeah. That's all I got. Kate, what about you? I'm halfway through my workout program, which is pretty crazy. Nice. And today You've I did been leg day. Killing it. Thank you. Today I did leg day, <laughs> and I didn't oh. die. No, she did leg day, but it it was not a normal leg day. No, it was it was hit. all hit. Mm-hmm. But Bar for I, my legs felt stronger. I noticed it, so that was pretty exciting. Um. Yeah. <sighs> You're doing great. That's what I'm doing. Yes. I need to start l- I, like lifting, but mm-hmm. um, I forgot to say that I did this little like book exchange thing on Instagram. Oh, yeah, that thing's cool. And it has been such a blast. So far, I've gotten, I think, five books from it. And I'm super excited to read all of them. I've got I got a really good one. Um, it's called Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell, which I've wanted to read for a really long time. So I'm super excited to get that. And then I also got three or four other ones I, it was just it's just a really cool thing like literally it's like a chain it's like a chain reaction book exchange so like I posted it and then everybody who replied to me I like sent them who to send a book to and it was all to the same person so shout out to Regine who got a ton of books because she was the person that was on my message to send people to get books for um but uh basically it's like I send a book to one person who is the person that Regine had commented on and then everybody who reaches back to me sends a book to Regine and then those people who posted that person sends a book to me so like in order to like get books the chain has to keep going but it's been really awesome it's like a good version of those really old annoying email chains yes exactly I was like (laughs) it's like one of those really annoying yeah it's a really annoying email chains but like it actually worked it was really cool as much as I would have loved to have done something like that, I have a book problem and I don't have space to put any new books. Yeah. I'd gotten rid of a I ton hate. before we moved. But like, so I, there's I like so many I want to read, but I also don't have time. No. I literally like I had to get rid of like bookshelves and upstairs. So like I literally have I'll post a picture actually on my Instagram um, of the piles of books I have in my room. Books. Sarah, what you up to? <laughs> Books. <laughs> Sorry, you guys are like frozen for a second. Um, school. What am I up to? Oh, by the time this comes out, maybe I'll be, well, I'm hopefully will be further along than I am with my miles, but I did my road by 200th mile today. Yeah, yes. getting physical. physical. Everybody getting physical up physical. in here. Let's get physical, physical. Um, I would like to start like lifting and doing more like weight training and stuff. I just don't have the space right now. <sighs> lifting is everything, man. Dude, I, love I love doing lifting. it. I'm seeing um, so many changes already. And is what is this? My second, this is my second week. Yeah. I'm seeing no changes and I've done 200 miles, but I also have thyroid issues. So that takes into account. Um, what? You might not see changes, but everybody else sees changes. Really? Yes. No, I, I I literally weigh like the same I did like a month hey, ago. Hey, take pictures. Not weight. Eh, it's seriously not wants weight. To look at that. I mean, and I'm also trying to think of like I'm not doing this like to lose weight because realistically, like if I'm not happy in the body I am, I won't be happy in the body like a skinnier person. Like that's not what it's about, anyways. Love you know yourself. I mean? you have to love, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, 
but that's, you know, that's a whole other, like we will get in that topic, whatever. Um, school work. Um, yeah, that's about I making really... stuff with me. Huh? Oh, <gasps> I will tell you, Girl. we talked about it in the last episode. I made Dude. the Best. perfect topping perfect. Perfect. to go on butterbeer. Like perfect. Uh, perfect. I can't even explain how spot on the topping is. It's yeah. so exciting. I didn't some... measure it. I'll try, but I yeah, I didn't measure it. I'll do I will do a whole vlog of trying to measure and recreate and actually write down I honestly the think, topping recipe. I think the biggest key was adding that butter flavoring butter extract. Butter extract. Stuff. Yeah. Yes. I think that was the key. Essence of butter. It was really just called imitation butter flavoring. It's essence of butter. <laughs> Call it um, what it is. And like the consistency of the first one was not like, um, was not the same as, as the stuff down in Florida that you'd get. Um, so the consistency was better second time around. The coloring was better, which really like I, and I added more butter. I added more everything, but the only thing I kept the same was the heavy whipping cream. Yeah. So I hope you guys like it. I mean, I'm not, I just tried to, you know, vlog like I would want to watch a vlog. Like, yeah, you guys did great. Have fun. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do, we'll probably do more cooking videos or more videos of like, obviously just yeah. the two of us. And then I know my friend Jen will come on and do a video or something with us. Cause <laughs> in, she wants to oh my God, <laughs> look at that um, face. Look how green my eyes look, though. Sorry, we're looking. I at was a trying to look at picture. my eyes in the video, so obviously you guys know, like at least the cold. By the time this comes out, the cold one is up. I don't know if the frozen one's up because I can't tell the future. Yeah, um, Sarah, you made a lot of dirty <laughs> looks towards me, so we'll see. The best. <laughs> but like, I I was trying to like look at my eyes because they didn't look blue, and I was like, what is wrong with my eyes? <laughs> um, but yeah, so we'll. we'll we will make a um, hot butter beer mm -hmm. um, and try that. Um, and tell us if you want us to like, not even to spe spe wow, words are hard. Specific? Specifically make something else or do something else. I think else. we're going to go through the Harry Potter cookbook for some things as well. Yeah, but there's also things in there that I won't be making because I'm not going to waste my like steak and kidney pie. No one's going to eat that. Yeah. And I won't. like no one that I would cook it for would eat that. I'm not saying if you like it. I'm not judging you. I just know like Tiffany won't eat that. No. Um, um, and then I think, I think there's blood pudding in there. Yeah. That's not but my jam. I, I'm one not comfortable making that, but I would eat it cause I've eaten that. <laughs> um, I just don't, I don't know where I'd get the ingredients, but there's other things that we would make. Once I find my candy thermometer, we can make candy. Cool. That'd be fine. Um, Martanius only bought some paint for the swish layer. So we're going to, test i think he bought like three different he bought light gray because he was down here and he had to do he had to be on camera for work and it's like the first time in a really long time number one they commented on his beard uh thought that was funny don't ever shave it <laughs> and he was like that's a really ugly wall and i was like yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we so know now we're that, trying well, like, now that thing. we talk about this all him. the time he oh, wants like, to no. change the it. actual the actual color of the wall is not ugly you know what i mean correct it's there's like um it's they, the, the people work. that lived here before like to sponge <laughs> color on it because it's the same as like your old the old Send bedroom that's not your office in discord mm -hmm. so they know so <laughs> i don't have my phone that part is not great yeah um, no well it'll be changing so he bought like three samples and, and tiffany asked me to help with that so maybe we'll vlog us painting um That'd be fun. it's ugly because i still have more I to think paint they, in my house i, I just think this to... was like an ohio state room when i don't other i don't disagree here. with you yeah. isn't there like a thing on the wall marty put those up the calves things why the stickers yeah he put those up i don't know sarah why that's weird why ask why um but yeah um yeah that's, all that's it all i'm doing is school that's work it. living life cool. making playlists on spotify for peeps it's easy yet hard work because i like get too like um into it 
So I'm like, this song can't be on this playlist. This one. So I'll like add ones and then I'll like delete them. So yeah. You're cute. They want Marty to do a Anything video. Else? They want Marty to do a video of making an omelet. No. For Occlumency and Owls. Why it's why an omelet? Oh, because of Omelie? Mm. Marty will not go on the internet. <laughs> Has he ever made say. an omelet? Yes. My, you know what I omelet. don't care for? <laughs> my dad, when he makes scrambled eggs, because he scrambles it in like one big thing where I like mine like scrambled. Does that make sense? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For Occlumency and Owls, for Scrudge Mere United. <laughs> <laughs> for Scrudge Mere United. That's the song. That concludes this week's episode. Thank you so much for listening, and don't let the muggles get you down. <gasps> Amazing! Just in my voice! <laughs> Put a little note in there. Snape. Snape. Yeah. Snape. Sarah what are you shocked at Tiffany? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, look at the gif. Oh, no. Can we play Sasa <laughs> back? What are you shocked about, Tiffany? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. A six. I don't know. What there's a dwarf. Oh, there's a dwarf in the room. Fozzie Bear. I thought to myself. Tell him. I thought to myself, really, like, why doesn't he just open the door and then realize he's a dog and dogs can't do that? <laughs> oh, it's Marty. <laughs> ah!